Hey guys, it's Gabriella from Email Maverick, and today I have actually something really interesting I want to show you. I always get questions from people always asking me about email optimizations, how to kind of go about and trying to figure out where your email marketing program might need some help. Uh, now, you know, if you don't have a lot of experience reviewing stats and maybe just trying to do a ben doing a benchmark analysis, definitely you can use third party tools out there that can easily help you look for places that your email marketing campaign um, can improve on. And the one thing I'm going to show you today is actually a third party tool from return path. It's actually part of the lab section. And today I'm actually going to show you a deliverability score. Now, again, anyone who knows me knows I am a super stats junkie. So I'm going to show you here some interesting numbers in terms of trying to see where you can look for areas of improvement in your email marketing campaign. So let's just take a look at this. Now, I've already done I've already done a comparison report I'm just using these as examples. So in this particular case, I'm using Zulily versus the Red Address Boutique. Now, very, very similar companies, very similar companies. So I wanted to obviously I'm trying to compare apples with apples and not oranges to apples. So creating this actual scorecard is actually quite simple. I've already done this, but I'm just going to kind of briefly show you how to actually create one here so here you can actually just select your industry in this case i picked i did pick the apparel and accessories industries since that is what we're looking at you're just going to actually take your sending domain and the brand name and you're going to actually input here a competitor and so in this case the sending domain i was originally taking was zulily and i'm comparing it against the red dress boutique so now let's actually look at the results and see what we can actually take from the results to see what we can learn of how we can actually improve so let's take a look. So here we have a so here we have the actual scorecard and this is a 30 day performance. So it's from August 10th to September 9th. So here you can actually tell it's Zulily. So this is the actual sending domain versus the Red Dress Boutique. So what we're going to actually look at here is we're going to look at the deliverability, the list activity, and we're, we're also going to look at the engagement. And here also return path gives you kind of a next step, but what we're going to go through is we're just going to look at the actual analytics to see what we can kind of take from trying. We're going to see what we can take from it. And the great thing is comparisons are always great, right? Because it's it's a great way to benchmark your brand versus industry. But again, take this with a grain of salt. It's not the holy grail, but it's still good to be able to see where you stand. So let's let's just take a, a brief overview here first at are you actually reaching the inbox? OK. So the deliverability score measures how well a brand is reaching the inbox at major ISPs. How to read the deliverability score. Now, this is very simple. A low, a low deliverability score indicates that the message may not be reaching the inbox. On average, one in four promotional emails land in the spam folder or get blocked. Improving deliverability means improving ROI. If you can get more email deliverability, if you can get more email delivered, then you have more opportunity to drive opens, click through rates and revenue. Of course, this is something we know already. So here we can actually see the deliverability score. So we can actually see here that the Red Dress Boutique is actually faring better than Zuldili. So as an email marketer consultant, if I see this number 44 against 35, the first thing I'm always going to ask my clients is, what exactly is going, you know, how many recipients do you have? What's your hygiene like? And so on and so forth. And we're going to see a little bit of that going forward in this report as well. So again, a lot of these things, a lot of these third party tools are great because it gets you thinking in terms of, okay, how am I going to be more proactive as opposed to reactive in your email marketing campaigns? So this is why these reports are really, really great so that you can start looking at things outside the actual box. So you can start to look at things a little bit differently. So here, I, this gives you a little bit more breakdown in terms of the actual inbox placement, spam rates, the complaint rates. So you can see here inboxing, obviously we already know that Red Dress Boutique is doing much better. The spam rate, they're much lower in spam. The complaint rates, they're much lower in complaint rates. So overall, these numbers make sense versus what you see up here, the 44 against the 35. So Red Dress Boutique is doing much better. So here now we're gonna see how engagement can will directly affect your rate of inboxing. 
And we can see here how active is your list. So here, let's look at the definition. The list activity score measures a subscriber's activity related to reading and purchasing behavior within the entire inbox. Okay. So how to read the list activity score. A low activity score indicates the, the subscriber may not be engaging with email. If they're not engaging with email, that is no good. Remember, it's not enough that someone just reads an email. It's, it's the engagement aspect that is very, very important. Improving list acquisition practices can help brand target consumers with higher lifetime value and improve email ROI. So definitely. So let's take a look here at what we're actually seeing. So here we can actually see if we look at the Red Dress Boutique, we'll notice here that, so here you have uh, three sections, primary, secondary, and dead accounts. So your primary email accounts is basically um, the email account that you're always looking at. That's your primary email account. Now, if you're anything like me, uh, chances are you have your, maybe your personal account or your work account, and then you may have a secondary account that you may only uh, use for whenever you purchase particular items online. So that would be your secondary account. And then you have your dead accounts here. So your dead accounts here are basically your inactive emails. So typically, I always suggest to people that you should at least be archiving people that have not opened or clicked any of your email campaigns within max 45 days, minimum 30 to 45 days. So they definitely have a good rate of dead accounts, which is 0%. So that's very, very good. But here, if we actually compare it to Zulily, you'll notice here that they actually have a higher rate of dead accounts, which is going to work against them in terms of deliverability and inboxing. So that is definitely something that needs to be addressed quickly because that will easily, easily help with the rate of inboxing as well. So that's a quick fix right there. So now let's take a look at the overall purchase activity. So here we can actually tell that the online purchase activity shows percentage of subscribers from each brand consumer network sample who made an online purchase with any merchant over the past 30 days, any merchant. Okay. So it's not just particularly they purchased at the red dress boutique or Zulily. It's any merchant within the past 30 days. So we'll notice here that the overall purchase activity is much higher in the Red Dress Boutique. And that actually helps engagement because obviously these people are high buyers. Buyers are engaging, okay? So all these factors are working for the Red Dress Boutique as opposed to Zulily, which they don't have as, they're not purchasing as much. So let's look at the online purchase category. So now that here's where we get a lot of great information. So if we're looking at email optimization, this is definitely some place where it's, we're going to probably get a lot of great ideas from. So we can tell here that if we're looking at the strengths of Zulily, right off the bat, we can see that Zulily does better in the entertainment. They do very well in travel. And they're pretty much at par when it comes to electronics and we'll say everything else. It's, there's not huge discrepancies except for definitely in the travel. They're much, much better in the travel. Granted, I'm not really sure Red Dress Boutique does too much in travel, but definitely the online purchases, if you're looking at trying to optimize, then in, in this particular case, if I was working with Zulily, um, definitely I would try looking at probably things that are more related to travel in the apparel industry. So this is definitely some place where, as, as I said before, you can get some great ideas in terms of trying to come up with content. So now let's look at the average online purchase. Average online purchase, we can see here that it's a little bit higher for Zulily than it is for Red Dress Boutique. So this is the average online purchase amount with all merchants for a subscriber for each brand over the past 30 days. Discrepancy is not big, but still, Zulily may not inbox as much, but they do have a higher online purchase. So just imagine if Zulily now were to um, were to bring down their dead accounts. So if they would work on their hygiene, work on their email engagement to get more inboxing emails, these guys could easily see, we're talking easily see a couple of extra 100,000 or even a million a day in terms of online purchases. So Again, it may not look like much, but sometimes just a small increase in open rates is huge in terms of bottom line for ROI. Huge, absolutely huge. So this is now we're looking at, are your subscribers engaged? Okay, so here the engagement we, we can see here, a Red Dress Boutique is much higher than a Zulily. You would think that 41 versus 545 is not huge, but as I said before, it is quite big in the email world, especially when it comes to engagement. Because remember, the engagement is going to work towards you inboxing. You inbox more, get a higher click-through rate, higher click-through rate, 
sends more traffic, more traffic, more ROI, right? You're gonna get more sales. So we can see here that the read rate. So if I was looking at Zulily, definitely I would look at these spikes. What happened on these days that people were so much more interested in the content? So I would look at these spikes. In terms of Red Dress Boutique, they're pretty steady overall. So definitely is there room for improvement? Absolutely, of course. So here we can actually now take a look at the actual message, the actual creatives itself. And we can actually see that they're not that different but the one thing that I do see here that can be working against Zulily is the fact there's just so much content on this newsletter, which could actually be working against them. Sometimes when it's a little bit more streamlined, obviously there's definitely some issues here with the Red Dress Boutique as well. There's, as I said before, there's room for improvement for sure. Um, but you can see here that the read rate is, you know, here you can see a particular one that has a much higher read rate, but the percentages are not huge. 1% is not a big discrepancy in terms of read rate. But the great thing here in terms of trying to optimize is looking at the peak subscriber reading times. This is one of my favorite parts because I always get asked the same question, you know, when's the best time to send emails? And the one thing I always tell people is you have to be able to look at your stats to see when are people opening and actually reading and going through your content. Now, being that this is the retail, you know, retail apparel uh, industry, you can see here that people are going to be a lot more engaged either before work or after work, right? Those are your peak times, either before 8 a.m. or after 5 p.m. And you can see here that people are a lot more engaging after 6 p.m., all the way up to about 12 a.m. So definitely if you, if I was working, let's just say if I was working with Julie, then I would either be going, I would either try to inbox before 8 a.m., either between 4 a.m. and 8 a.m., and after basically 5 p.m. on the way to 12, 12 a.m., basically. So this is a, definitely, I would not be emailing within these time periods. Obviously, this is so, but still, still a lot of great information here in terms of Red Dress Boutique. It's not, it's kind of sporadic. It's kind of all over the place, but still pretty similar. I'd still probably be sending their email campaigns, I would be doing it probably between the um, 5 a.m. and 10 a.m. in this particular case. So again, this just shows you how different it is for each particular audience, okay? So this is why there's no universal best time for, let's just say, for every single email list out there. So hopefully you guys found this interesting and helpful. If you have any questions or concerns, just email Gabriella at emailmaverick.com. Thanks so much, guys.